when you ask high school kids, there was a survey of high school kids in our country, what's one word that describes high school? The word was boring. It can't be boring, you gotta engage people. So that's our obligation, to engage and motivate. Big picture learning, in my take, um, is for everyone. Because it's a philosophy that starts with the student and says, what's your interest and passion? Now let's put you with people in the community who have that interest and passion. And so we have 52 schools in this country. And we have 25 in Australia, 25 in the Netherlands. There's enough people out there that are saying this is right, but there's always people fighting us. All they care about is test scores where we care about much more than test scores. So our biggest problem is helping people understand the beauty of this and the importance of this um, to a student's whole life, um, not just what they get on a particular test score. We try to really not only focus on their academic growth, but also their personal growth, their ability to connect with their peers well, the ability to communicate with other adults. To me, it just brings the learning to a whole new level. It brings life to the learning and it just keeps me motivated uh, to do the work. We were very lucky when we were asked to do the school in 1995. We had a commissioner, Peter McWalter, said, he said, would you design this school? I said, only if I could do it exactly how we want. Thinking, of course, he would say no. He said, yes, go for it, okay? I'm not sure that could have happened anywhere back in that time. So we really, my partner and I, Elliot Washer, kind of closed our eyes and said, if we didn't know there was such a thing as school, what would we do? It would be find their interest, find their passion, put them with people who are also passionate about that, get real projects that have a consequence, have not just filling in tests, but every 10 weeks our kids stand up for one hour and talk about their work. And it gives an opportunity for the student to present everything that they've learned throughout the trimester. And there was one girl one day, I said, oh, Jocelyn, are you nervous about your exhibition Friday? She said, that's nothing. That's just a dress rehearsal. I'm speaking to 45 veterinarians about monkey behavior, because she was working at the zoo. That's what she was doing. So that's real work. That's a 15-year-old kid. We have a series of rubrics. One of them is a real-world learning rubric that we use um, that the mentor at the internship site, the student, and the advisor all complete with three different perspectives that talk about the student's growth in certain areas. We have a project rubric that we use uh, that talks about the specific elements of a project that we're looking for and how well the student met each of them. Um, and we have a six traits writing rubric, which is another one that we use to analyze and evaluate student written work and how it progresses over time. Every other school starts with the curriculum. Here's science, how do I put that into the kid? Here's English, how do we start from the kid? What are you interested in? It, it's a place where I care a lot about because it cares about the kids and focuses on one student at a time and um, part of our mission is just this relentless commitment to our students. We try to really not only focus on their academic growth but also their personal growth, their ability to connect with their peers well, the ability to communicate with other adults. A, a teacher, an advisor only has 16 students. They know them so well. They get called at midnight. They get called when something happens on a Saturday. So for example, in the traditional classroom role, um, once the bell rings, you, you, you have the student in front of you, you do 45 minutes, the bell rings again, and they leave. In my role, I get to work with the student, and if they're having difficulty in the classroom, I can pull them out, I can find out what's some of the stuff behind it and help support them. Becoming a parent has helped me really appreciate this place even more, because that's when I, I started working with, you know, you work with a lot of parents, and they talk to you about, like, um, finally, my child loves school again. Finally, my child's safe. We're built around respect for the individual. Our whole mantra is one student at a time, okay? It, we don't have the kind of clicks you see in, in many places. It's creating this environment again where, where kids want to go, are happy again. Like, what happened? You know, we have kids, we have the most diverse school in Rhode Island because your city schools are mostly of color. Your suburban schools are 90% white. We have a state school, so kids can come from anywhere. So when you look around, 
You have kids sitting next to kids who have never sat next to each other before. So we want to be a small community where everybody knows everybody um, and it allows me as a principal to be able to follow up on, um, we call them non-negotiable behaviors. You know, if somebody does something to abuse the community and has to be separated from school, they don't come back without apologizing to the school, having a discussion about school. We take this stuff very seriously as a community, as a family. And the world's changing, so we talk about here if we looked exactly the same as we did in 1996, we'd be a problem. We have to change because the world's changing, but education hasn't changed in over 100 years. It's still the same, and kids are still learning the same things, right? Um, but technology is changing every day, and unless we give students who are really into technology the opportunity to play and touch and see what's out there, then they're going to be stuck. If you can't educate your students, then you start getting a bigger and bigger gap between the haves and the have-nots. And right now, the gap is bigger than any time in our life between the haves and the have-nots. And we are soon going to become a country, like many foreign countries, have the rich and the poor, no middle class. And so we have an incredible obligation to help urban kids make it, make it in this world, to give them the skills, the initiative, the motivation, the, the, to, to lay that out for them so that they have a shot at it. And if we don't do that, then our, our whole country's in trouble.